everyone, welcome back to our culinary adventure. Today we're diving into the world of pie crusts. From the traditional flaky crust to a rich buttery shortbread base and even a gluten-free option, we're rolling out all the goodness. We'll explore the unique charm of each type, the techniques involved, and the secret to getting them just right. So, gather your rolling pins, dust off your apron, and get ready to embark on this delightful journey into pie perfection. Let's start rolling. For the flaky crust, you'll need all-purpose flour, cold butter, a pinch of salt, and ice water. The magic of the traditional flaky crust lies in the cold butter. That's right, it's all about the butter. You see, when those cold bits of butter melt in the oven, they create steam, puffing up the layers of dough around them. It's this steam that gives us the flaky layers we all love in a good pie crust. Now, let's talk technique. Start by cutting your cold butter into small pieces and adding it to your flour. Here's a tip. Use a pastry cutter or a fork to cut the butter into the flour. You're aiming for pea-sized chunks of butter evenly distributed throughout the flour. Next, it's time to add your ice water. Pour it in slowly and use a spatula or your hands to gently combine everything. The goal is to add just enough water to bring the dough together. And remember, less is more when it comes to handling your dough. The more you work it, the warmer your butter gets. And remember, we want to keep that butter cold. Once your dough comes together, it's time to roll it out. Lightly flour your surface and roll the dough into a disc that's about 1 8 of an inch thick. Now, let's roll it out and set it aside as we move on to our next crust. Stay tuned because up next, we're diving into the rich, buttery world of the shortbread crust. Next up, the shortbread crust. This one is richer, has more butter, and includes sugar. It's a crust that's perfect for those who love a crumbly, melt-in-your-mouth texture. The beauty of this crust lies not just in its buttery goodness, but also in its simplicity. You'll need all-purpose flour, softened butter, and granulated sugar. The absence of water is what gives this crust its unique texture. Start by mixing your butter and sugar together until it's creamy. Then gradually add in your flour, mixing until it forms a dough. The dough may seem a bit crumbly at first, but that's okay. It'll come together once you start pressing it into your pie dish. This is where the magic happens. Using your fingers, press the dough into your pie dish, making sure it's evenly spread. You can also use the bottom of a measuring cup to help press the dough into the dish. The key here is to ensure the dough covers the bottom and sides of the dish evenly. Once the dough is pressed in, simply prick the bottom with a fork. This prevents the crust from puffing up during baking. And that's it, no need to chill or pre-bake. This crust is ready to be filled and baked. Now for those who prefer or need a gluten-free option, let's look at how that's made. Gluten-free crusts can be just as delicious. We'll use a gluten-free flour blend and xanthan gum to help it bind. The absence of gluten doesn't mean the absence of flavor or texture. In fact, with the right ingredients and a little bit of know-how, a gluten-free crust can be as satisfying and delicious as any other. First, we start with a gluten-free flour blend. There are many available on the market, or you can make your own. The blend usually includes a mix of rice flour, potato starch, and other gluten-free flours. This gives us the base for our crust. Next, we add xanthan gum. This might sound like a strange ingredient, but it's key in gluten-free baking. It acts as a binder and provides the elasticity that gluten would normally provide in a traditional crust. Now we'll add our fat. We're using cold butter, but a non-dairy substitute works just as well for those who follow a vegan diet. It's important that the butter is cold, as this will help to create a flaky texture in our crust. We combine these ingredients, being careful not to overwork the dough. Remember, gluten-free dough can be a bit more fragile, so handle it with care. Once our dough is mixed and has rested a bit, we'll roll it out and fit it into our pie pan. And there we have our three bases. Now let's add some flair with decorative touches. Decorating your pie can be the fun part. Let's start with a simple lattice top. This classic design is not just aesthetically pleasing. It also allows steam to escape during baking, preventing a soggy crust. To create this, roll out your dough and slice it into even strips. Lay half of the strips across your pie, then weave the remaining strips through them in an over-under pattern. Don't worry if it's not perfect, the rustic look has its charm. Now, let's move on to another decorative technique, leaf patterns. This is where you can let your creativity shine. Use a small knife or a cookie cutter to cut out leaf shapes from your dough. You can even score the leaves with a knife to create a more realistic texture. Arrange these leaves along the edge of your pie, overlapping them slightly for a lush, leafy look. If you're feeling adventurous, why not combine the two? 
a lattice top with a leafy border is truly a sight to behold. Or you could even fill the entire top of your pie with a mosaic of dough leaves. The possibilities are endless. Remember, the key to a beautiful pie is patience and creativity. Take your time, experiment, and most importantly, have fun with it. These little touches make your pie not only delicious, but a work of art. And that's it for today. Whether you choose flaky, shortbread, or gluten-free, any of these crusts will elevate your baking game. We've explored traditional, buttery, and gluten-free crusts, each with its own charm and technique. Remember, the secret lies in the details, from keeping your butter cold to handling your dough with care. Now, it's your turn to roll up your sleeves and experiment with these techniques. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video where we'll spice up our fillings.